Hello. In this video, I want to show you how to create your own Linux Debian distribution based on the Debian 12. Debian 12 has been released this past June 12 with the code name Book One. It's been a long way to the installation in a very respected Linux distribution. I want to follow the recipe previously built for the Dinos uh, uh, installation following the same steps. I'm going to go ahead and do the get started script and I just want to walk us through everything. This The results will be able to be to, for download directly from the SourceForge page and it's going to be for the versions of the work, what we're building here the the Tenos uh, Docker version and as well as the regular Denos is ISO. Both will be available for download and fully functional. Um, everything is going to be virtualized in VirtualBox. Uh, and the distribution I'm using as a host to builder is X Ubuntu 23.04. The software on this video is recorded by ShareX. So without any further ado, further let's go ahead and get started. I'm going to take a, this machine that is actually running. I got an SSH because it's an open two and there's nothing in that. I'm a regular user. It can be any name, it doesn't really matter. I'm going to do wget to get started URL for file. I'm going to change it to permit to and execute it by the whole. Let's go ahead and get the dependencies. This is similar like the git. Just kind of getting the files, just basically getting your files. It's only a W gets so a bunch of files. So what I want to do is execute one to five scripts. The first one is actually just creating um, apt install and dependencies. I run this before, so there's actually, therefore, there's nothing to be installed this time. So no worries, it's all perfectly normal. It's actually suggests me to execute the part version, the version which is going to be the dead bootstrap. If there's some changes right now, this is the time where actually you can actually feel free to change the host name, the distro name, the version. For me right now, it's just fine. I just want to go ahead and go with the files. But if you have some preferences, this is the time where you can actually do a VI on the file or nano and install. Just like a um, Installation of Linux from scratch is a free kernel installation first, and that's where actually gets all the packages, gets all the dependencies, and once all the packages and all the dependencies get into place, uh, this uh, particular script is going to actually build this temporary uh, root environment. It's like the builder, so uh, it's almost like a, you need a Linux to build Linux. It's a temporary builder or you can actually root into the environment, just like you did from scratch, and from there install your packages and get all everything you wanted. At the end, you exit and eventually you leave the kernel. The additions on that one is going to be script number four, which actually makes Quash file system, and the last one you know, is script number five, which ultimately builds the ISL image for you. But as you can see right now, the files that they're being actually downloaded and installed, they're very, very, just, just about one to one, the same files that you will do when you build up Linux from scratch, and uh, you just get everything in place for a, your temporary file system. So, right now, this the magic of this uh, debootstrap package is actually let you build this one and actually pre stage or get ready to root. Ultimately, when the script finishes, we want to be ourselves uh, directly in within the Cheroot environment and um, we see how this evolves. This is actually continue building at this time. We download everything that I needed, extracting it, just put it in the right place with the package manager, which is pretty cool. And um, not before long we will to actually see ourselves into the shell of the cheroot of this new pre-stage environment.
the machine that is running this script it's an HP Omen uh, Intel Core i7 just in case of course the mileage will vary and the machine might have different processor different internet access um, that, that's what could possibly make a difference because you look here we are as you can see we have the files I'm just going to go for the uh, shell script for the basic single root so eventually it's going to be as you can see it's actually repeating it seems like it's repeating the same exercise but basically it's once you're this temporary chip root environment then you're building your real environment that's what actually start getting it seems like it's getting the packages it's getting everything but this is taking like a real temporary clean environment to start just like Linux from scratch so and this is a step before exit the chip root environment where you can customize everything you wanted about your distro because once it's actually exit compressed and an ISO it's not going to be easy to change this is the time once it's a uh, building and compiling the kernel gets done where you can actually tweak change modify update you know customize your distro the way you want it so here's the opportunity once it once it finishes script number three before you exit the true environment where you have the opportunity to actually modify some icons some graphics some banners or slogans you know you name it and um, make it yours right Otherwise, it will be just uh, like a regular spin, unless you're going to add a flavor or some particular um, things. But uh, what really makes a Linux distro is the package manager, right? The kernel is not just about the same everything. So what makes the difference between what is a distribution here and there, besides the, is that some of the optimization that the kernel does, like Oracle for running databases and things like that? Uh, if, it's, if we're talking strictly about the kernel, the main difference that makes distributions via distribution is the package manager. So, package managers want to make what Red Hat is Red Hat, what Debian is Debian, what Arch, and uh, every distribution makes their own one. Uh, the Pacman, uh, the package manager. So, in reality, they all share the same kernel. But we're talking about you know what is actually going to be orchestrating all these packages along the distribution. What is going to make it compatible? Maybe maybe some initiative will come out and make it a universal distribution that can understand, learn, and embrace different package managers, possibly. Maybe everybody would continue on their own package manager. Um, for me right now, it's just a very good opportunity to continue to get familiar with this distribution, continue confirming that this code is not actually being dated. It's actually very agnostic very efficient and actually gets always the latest version of this particular uh, live distribution and uh, it's pretty cool to see it. it's been four years ago it's been solid it's been working and um, it definitely can can bring some bring some light and some help or some particular use cases and of course at the end of the day the most important thing is like just like when people ask what is the best Linux distribution and the answer is always the same the best one is the one that works for you so in that regard, make it yours, make your use case, make the boss, never stop learning, keep going, embrace, you know, solve the things and work smarter, not harder. So eventually everything just one step forward to get things, um, achieving more results in, in your particular um, scenarios, right? So as we can see, it's continuing from packaging, doing things and, uh, Everything that we see in the packages is actually pretty cool because it's basically the main um, packages plus where we have declarative place into the scripts. So we know exactly what is being installed. Uh, everything using the Debian package manager, of course. Uh, if you have more need to have X or, uh, you know, a particular window manager or something, whatnot, uh, you can always definitely modify that and make a repeatable process choose this one in English for my case later on this step that is almost finished is going to be asking us to actually go ahead and put the root password I'm going to choose the root password as uh, in this case for this global district calls just for demonstration purposes I'm going to put just store as a password which is by watch root to door and 
at this time, I don't need to do any more changes. I can just exit from the true environment, and I can go ahead and run this. Number four, this is the script, in my opinion, from the whole set of five scripts, building the Denos OS and the Live CD, that might take the most, take the longest. And again, the balance will vary because it depends on your operating system. It will depend on your speed uh, of the, your hard drive, solid state drive. Uh, the other ones were uh, depending on the internet access and the, the, the speed of your downloads. But this one in particular is actually going to be something very intrusive on the, on the file system. It's crunching and getting all those numbers, getting everything built in one squash file system. This is the part, in my opinion, the one actually is that it could be the most time consuming. The one you probably will see something different, but uh, I'm not going to stop the video when I carry on on this one. 7%, I know when it's 35%, it jumps all the way to about 80, 85, and it goes really faster. Uh, the last script, number five, is very, very easy and straightforward. It doesn't take any time. This is actually what we're talking about the crunch, the bigger part of the of the whole build is when actually getting everything. This one things potentially could go wrong, um, but there's a lot of places where things could go wrong, right? But in a, in a package, in a typically in a package manager, if you download the package, you verify the package, things will install properly. This case is actually the one that's probably taking the the longest. But uh, let's see how, how this how this will evolve. It's moving along fairly quick, and. Uh, At the end of the day, the expected file size is going to be around 450 megs, 470 megs. But the good thing about it, though, is when you build your Linux live distribution, it's going to be hard to be the set for slacks, set for maybe Alpine Linux and possibly, possibly, of course, PC, PC bugs. Um, some of them minor Linux distros that actually is going to be able to compete in size. Um, having a full distro like Debian in 400 megs, be able to boot and run run. Even there's another version that actually can done with Docker and actually is running in RAM. You can actually potentially customize them and download your own packages uh, in the ISO. So you'll be ready to go. Um, achieving that, that level of compression is pretty cool. I'm thinking um, personally for my use case, Take one of these ISO images and maybe export it into a format that is actually usable for the network virtualization platform ETHNG because I can simulate Cisco devices and boot Cisco devices, simulate networks. And potentially, if I want to put a machine with 500 megs, I can put a full Linux machine into the simulation and without that, I'll be able to run commands like ping, trace route, iperf, inmap. You name it um, into the into the environment. I think that's pretty cool, pretty appealing. Um, I am, I'm not sure. I'm not sure if they. I don't. I don't think it's going to be too much, too much of a hassle to convert the ISO into that. The other virtualization uh, environment, um, of course. Um, Not all of them will support the virtualization of uh, devices by itself, but um, I know if even G can actually take ISOs and convert it. QCAL is the one really the format that they're using, uh, possibly to go to to that route. Um, some other solutions, I'm not really sure they support a addition of ISOs and added. Possibly, uh, virtualization is actually evolving, moving forward, really, really. Incredibly, so there might be something that may be down the road. Uh, for now, let's go ahead and stick with a Debian 6 ISO image. As we can see, it's actually moving ahead pretty good now. So we completed the last part of the script 05. This takes no time at all. I actually go ahead and create it. As you can see right there, it's already 84% work done. And with that, we can actually successfully say, okay, we were. We actually achieve 